following the death of a young woman in the detention of the morality police. Now, she had originally been detained because a few strands of her hair was apparently showing through her hijab. Now, her death sparked not only uh, a nationwide protest, but a global movement as women are demanding that their rights must be heard. Now, earlier today, our producer, Kaylin Robertson, sat down with the Iranian human rights activist, Mariam Namazi, who explained why these protests in Iran now are so different to all of the generations uh, of protests that have gone before. Just from the beginning um, of what we've been seeing in the news recently, what is going on in Iran? So Iran uh, is uh, a very interesting country because it's had an Islamic government now for over 40 years. But nonetheless, there's been huge amounts of protest against uh, Islam in power over the decades. What we're seeing, though, now is a, a, an even more wonderful and progressive phenomenon in the sense that we had a young woman, Mahsa Amini, uh, she's an Iranian Kurdish woman who had come to visit Tehran with her brother. Um, she had a few strands of hair showing. She had the hijab on or veil on because it's compulsory in Iran. Um, but because of those few strands of hair, the guidance patrol or morality police, as they're called, dragged her away in hospital brain dead. Uh, they had fractured her skull, they had beaten her so much. So she was killed for a few strands of hair. And since then, there's been ongoing protests. It, it hasn't stopped. And we're calling it a woman's revolution because women and young girls... ...a few strands of hair. And since then, there's been ongoing protests. It, it hasn't stopped. And we're calling it a woman's revolution because women and young girls are in the lead. Uh, lots of people have been arrested, 15,000 so far. And imagine a government official said that the average age of those arrested is 15 years old. How many people are actually being, being arrested at the moment and how hard is the government clamping down on protesters? Well, since uh, September 16th alone, uh, there have been over 300 uh, protesters killed. Uh, but also the la latest numbers we've had is over 15,000 arrested. They will be facing torture. They, they're going to be uh, brut brutalized in prison. Many of them may not make it out alive. And we know too that the so-called members of parliament, it's the members of the Islamic Assembly, from 290, uh, around 227, called on the Islamic judiciary to execute protesters. And so the risk of protesters being executed is very great. They're seeing a generation on the streets that isn't backing down. It, it's sort of an existential threat for them. So they will go as far as they can. And hopefully we're going to get enough world support and solidarity to stop that from happening. A lot of people on Twitter are just outright saying that it's totally fake news, that anyone's really being executed. Why do you think there's so many people ready to defend and, and deny all of this? You know, there are 130 offences that you can be executed for in Iran, and it includes apostasy, blasphemy, heresy, enmity against God, uh, you know, sex outside of marriage. There are even laws that allow for uh, women to be stoned to death, for example. Uh, if you have sex outside of marriage. So I think, unfortunately, um, there are sections of the population that have spent the sev several decades defending the Islamic movement as an anti-imperialist movement and seeing it as a revolutionary movement against imperialism, whereas in fact it's an anti-revolutionary movement, it's an inhuman movement. You don't have to be pro-US militarism or uh, U.S. imperialism, um, you can be opposed to that, but you should also be opposed to Islamic imperialism and what the Islamists are doing. Um, and I think it's high time that people understand that it's not about Western and Eastern, but these are universal values that people in Iran are fighting for, and it should be supported by everyone. Now, taking a look at poverty, and health back here in Britain. Now, this week saw the inquest into the death of the young boy Awab Ishak, and the conclusion was that toxic mould in his house had uh, 